I am Horseman. was the first show that I ever wrote and, well, directed on stage. It's a cheesy but satirical look of modern superhero movies where instead of Iron Man, Captain America, Batman, you now get people like Horseman and Early Bird, Stan and Quick Chick. I've been in theater for a really long time now and usually I was on stage but I've always wanted to take a look backstage and just try that experience. So in high school, I talked to the head of the drama club, Miss Magdalene Kennedy, and she pretty much gave me full control. She said I could direct whatever I want and it will be up to me. My first idea was to direct It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia's The Nightman Cometh. That did not go over well. <laughs> I was able to get it running, but the problem was is that they always, they wanted to censor everything that was seemed offensive. And it just, it just didn't become funny anymore. It was just watered down, to, it was just a mess. So I was thinking, why, why don't I use my love of writing and incorporate into this? So that's what I did. I would write, I was gonna, so that's what the plan was, to write a show for the club. The first thing I wrote was, I don't even remember what it was called. The first thing I wrote was about four people living in New York and they were trying to get jobs. It's very general. It was a mess. It, it was it, it, it wasn't a good script. It, it was pretty bad. Think of like the worst episode of Friends, but like times infinity. I was about to give up on the whole thing until I saw a commercial for Captain America Civil War. 
And I thought to myself, hey, they're they're making these superhero movies like really fast now. Like they're just they're just going at them. But you you can make like the, the world's worst superhero, and it could be marketable, like like Horseman. And that's how it came to be. After writing a couple drafts, I got my friend Lennon Harper on board, and he started writing it with me. In the first couple of months, we workshopped the show after class, and a couple months later, we pretty much got the show running, and here we are now. So what am I going to do for this special celebration? Well, I got a few interviews with some people who were in the production and helped out, so we're gonna listen to them. The first person is Jill Anderson. She costumed the show. Here we are. Hello, and welcome back. I am here with Jill Anderson, the coolest gal about town. Is that like a good interviewee thing to inter introduce you? No? All right. No. Okay, well, I, Jill, you can introduce yourself and what you did for the show. <laughs> okay, well, you already said my name, but yeah. hi, I'm Jill. And I costumed the show. And I saw it. That's about it. <laughs> well, I think costuming is a big deal. There, I was there at the first ever like read through of it. When it was just And I put one joke in. I was so actually, I'm a co writer. <laughs> uh yeah, uh Joel was there from the very beginning. Uh when we were first doing run throughs, it was just me, her and Lennon. Where Len and I would switch off with guy parts and she'd play all the girl parts. So Jill yep. got to know each character pretty well. Specifically early bird oh, yeah. and pedestrian and mom. But yeah. Uh she's pretty and quick cool. chick. I said quick chick. Oh, you didn't. Yeah, I didn't. Did. I'll play I'll do a replay. Early bird. Oh yeah. Kind of like give us a background of what you do and how'd you get into theater and stuff like that? Surprise. How long do we have? Um, yeah, you can take your time. I, I am a uh, music theater major at the University of Buffalo. And I'm also an education minor. And um, I started doing theater when I was seven. And then ever since then, I've taken dance classes. I've been in... 34 different productions, I think. I stopped counting. I really don't know. Um, just finished up Hamlet at UB, where I was Queen Gertrude. That was fun. Um, That's why so I've done playing. everything from straight, straight plays to uh, musicals to um, I've choreographed. I've co-directed with Sam. <laughs> and um, I've costumed, but Super Zeros is my first costuming experience so that was fun it's first for the one and only people. actually yeah uh yeah geez. uh I, I think you kind of already answered this one but how did you get into super zeros i was dating you <laughs> that's fair <laughs> I didn't have a joke. uh yeah Okay. Are you gonna cut that part? Nope, that's in there. <laughs> oh my God. Say hello. Yeah. Uh, I was a good girl and a helpful girlfriend, but I, I liked it. It was fun. I'm gonna talk about actually. Let's actually talk about Super Zeros now. Uh, what? Uh, I, yeah, I know, but like, let's like really get into it, all right? Uh, okay. Well, How would you like? get like the concept of like the costumes like get, like go through like the process of creating the costumes because you may like everyone like i know that's seen the show they said like some of the best parts were the costuming because it it felt um, had that balance i guess i always loved like making t-shirts like i'm the two-time grand island high school best t-shirt decorator winner um, and i always like loved star kid and when star kid did holy musical batman they did this kind of like nerd, um, nerdy superheroes with Converse like thing. And I always really like that stuck with me and I wanted them all to look very cohesive. So I went with like similar, like they all had a t-shirt and they all had the socks. So, and then the girls had the tights and stuff. So that was all, so everything looked cohesive, but they all had their own 
their own twist on the the basic outfit. And then, um... Could you go through each like, character, <laughs> like, in a way? What? Could you go through each character? Like, of, like, what... Oh, my like, gosh. What oh, specific thing so you long. Them? Um, like, quick check, I gave her a leather jacket cause, with, like, cape on it, because she's, like, badass. She was my favorite, but she's, like, my favorite character, by the way. If I was going to be in it, that's what I want to be. But, side note, um, Early Bird had her feather... Uh, cape which was pretty fun I that was kind of a spur of the moment thing um I was like I want to give them something really cool so I put feathers all over their cape I'm pretty sure I could still find a feather where I made it um there was feathers everywhere and then uh and then horseman horseman pretty much it kind of spoke for himself with the horse suit um you pretty much did that one uh Stan was just basic with his Spongebob socks um, Squirrel Girl was fun. I gave her a tutu because why not? <laughs> Tutus are fun, right? Yeah. Wasn't tutu, uh, tutu. I, I may be totally wrong, but wasn't <laughs> the costume for Squirrel Girl actually like the squirrel parts of Squirrel Girl were actually like raccoon? Was it? Yeah. I, oh, yeah. I couldn't find I couldn't find Squirrel, so she was a raccoon. It looked good enough. Um, I actually went to part key. Key of costuming on a budget. I went to Party City, like, two days after Halloween when everything's, like, or not Spirit, Spirit Halloween. I went to Spirit Halloween two days after Halloween, and I got everything, like, 80% off. And, like, granted, this was months before this the process even started. Like, months. Mm-hmm. So I was praying everything would fit. But their logos, I designed each of the, their logos. Um, Quick Chicks was kind of based off the Flash because she had the lightning bolt. Mm-hmm. Um, and Early Birds was kind of based off Batman's logo. Um, Stan just had a hello, my name is, because I thought that was funny. Um, Horseman was just an H, because I remember Sam said that's all he wanted. <laughs> and then the Keymaster was just, just a key. Everything. And I, he had a rhinestone cape. Yeah, I think we need so to go more into depth and about for, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll wait till you're done, but we'll go into more of the key yes, master. No, everybody knows. Everybody needs to know. <laughs> I did the booty shorts. I did not pick those. That was him. Um, <laughs> not my choice. But even there though, was a lot. It was a lot. <laughs> it was a lot. <laughs> but yeah. Um. Other than that, their costumes are just simple. A uh, lot of glitter, lots of feathers, lots of puffy paint. And that's that's about it. One of, one of the coolest things I saw, what I feel like made them stand out, were they looked cool, but they fit the tone of the show. Like, do you know what I mean? Well, yeah, it's, I might like. I pretty much pictured what Sam would look like if Sam was a superhero, and then threw that up on everyone. <laughs> All right, that's fair. Uh, going back to when we were first running it, do you want to talk about the one line that you got in to the show that you co-wrote? Uh, so I, I'm a quote-unquote actor. I don't know if I can call myself that, but um, yes, you are. Or actress, whatever. Um, but I was reading for Quick Check, and I don't know. I was just like improvising, and I was like, "She'd be chewing gum in this moment." So I was like, <laughs> and then at one point, <laughs> Sam was like, "Are you chewing gum?" And I was like, "Yeah." So the gum chewing made it into the show because Quick Check would be chewing gum. Mm-hmm. Like, since, like, the show's happened, like, what do you plan to do, like, afterwards? Like, after after the show, like, what is your plan? Like, do you plan to do more costuming for sh- stuff? Do you want to go into uh, like, a little more? I was like, the show's Sorry, been I, was, I, was, I, was saying, I was saying the, the question wrong. Uh, uh, yeah, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it a lot. Um, I work in retail, so I'm around clothes a lot. I like clothes. Um... And so put, it was, like, kind of a way of putting my two passions, like, fashion and theater together. So that was really cool. I want to try to take – there's a costuming course offered at UB. I'm going to try to take it. 
so yeah. Nice. It's cool. Okay, uh, I'm just gonna be finishing up with a couple more questions. Uh, what could you name? Like seeing the show, could you name two of your favorite moments? Me too. Well, uh, like usually I asked was one that you kind of caused, and I guess that like you can answer that, and then something that other people did. One that. Like whether it was something that had well, to do with the, I, cost, the costuming or the gum line or anything. One that I caused was early bird's cape. Yeah, that was cool, and she could use it throughout the show. So that I guess that Sarah, something. Sarah and Abby were uh, in love with that cape, especially Sarah. I don't even know where it is. I think I have it. Maybe. No, I think either I have it where or Sarah still cape? has it. Where is it? Where in the world? Where is are they now? Early birds came. Um, it's been a while since I've seen the show. <laughs> I guess Lennon's reveal was. I don't know if I'd say it's a favorite part, but it's a part. <laughs> well, because like most of Act and one. his parts. <laughs> yeah, everyone seems to say that Lennon's parts were the best. I guess this kind no, of. I'm like saying a, like when he like revealed his actual costume. Yeah, the, like with the booty shorts and everything. His trench coat was cool though too. Remember we were like we, we walked into a Salvation Army and we were like Sam's like I want a purple trench coat. I'm like where the hell are we gonna find a purple trench coat? And there was one in Salvation Army because Sam's so, a lucky son. I was so happy because like I had ideas for the costume, but other I had like small ideas that I wanted for each costume, but it was mostly Jill, obviously. But like one of them, like I was like so set on, and it was it was such a like a rare thing that like there's no way that was gonna happen. Was I wanted a trench, a purple trench coat for Lennon to wear as the keymaster for mo most of Act One, and yeah, pretty much finding it at Salvation Army, which a pretty it was destiny in a way, I guess. All right, uh, last question, uh. If you were to take something out of this experience and incorporate it and, like, have it ingrained in your head, what would you take from it? Of doing Super Zeros? Um, sometimes when you make mistakes with puffy paint, you can cover them up with more glitter. <laughs> that sounds like a story. What happened, Jill? <laughs> I messed up Keymaster's cape so bad. I I laid it down to dry and then it like folded on itself. Oh no! <laughs> You're confessing. And I was like crying because I thought I ruined it, but I used um shout stain remover and then I just put some glitter on top of it and it was fine. Nice. Because it was, like, black. It had, like, black smears. And I guess, but I guess that's, like, sometimes you can learn, like, from your mistakes and always find a way around it. Yeah. That's a, that's a good lesson. <laughs> All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for doing this. I love you. You're welcome. <laughs> and I'll... What? Are you scared? What? Right. Don't say that. <laughs> Live internet. All right. All right. Uh, but yeah, thank you so much. I'll talk to you later. I'll probably talk to you tonight. Oh, okay. you know, I'm, I'm ruining the immersion. I'm sorry. Yeah. All right. See ya. Thank you for having me. Woo. It was a pleasure. So I should have worn my shirt. Was that like the dress code? No, no, you're fine. I don't even know where mine is somewhere. I think I caught it. <laughs> and with that, goodbye. Like in a cute way. Like in a cute way? No, no, I get you. No, I get you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She did some. You did before we go. You did something with like the shirt I'm wearing now. Oh, I just cut it to a wider neckline so it'd fall off my shoulder and look more retro. Yeah. Uh, uh show the photo of her with the cast. For three, two, one, go. I don't remember that photo being taken. 
Well, look at it. It's right there. It's right in front of us. It's so great. Look at me. <laughs> I was a brunette. <laughs> oh, yeah. Surprise. That's that's not her natural hair color. You can't tell from my eyebrows? <laughs> all right. That'll be all. I'll talk to you later. Bye. For the budget, we had, like, little to no money at all. So the little money we did have, we, we used for the costumes. For the sets, we used what we already had, and pretty much the, the only, like, changes we made was we added, like, we, we painted the doors purple on Keymaster's Lair. Of course, we gotta talk about the technical side. There was a lot of, a lot of stuff happened. Sound effects, music, lighting cues, it, it was crazy. And of course, you probably want to talk to one of the heroes. <laughs> Duh. So this next interview is with Mr. Mark Gordon, who is the technical advisor, along with Sarah Gordon, who played Early Bird. Check it out. Well, I am here with some other friends from Super Zeros. Would you guys like to introduce yourselves? That's okay. okay. I'm Sarah Gordon, and this is my father. I'm big. I'm booming announcer man, also yeah. known as Mark Gordon. Oh, I should have said who I played. I was Early Bird. <laughs> Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, Sarah here played Early Bird, and Mr. Mark Gordon was the booming announcer man, as well as the the tech advisor. Like he pretty much did everything behind the scenes. A lot of help. Yeah. Okay. Right, this just uh, started off. Uh, what got you both like into theater, whether performing or teching for stuff? I think you should answer that. Oh, you want me to answer? Yeah, go first. Um, Well, I mean, with my job working at uh, Grand Island School as the audio-video coordinator um, and technician, you know, I see all of the shows that we do, all the plays and musicals and concerts and everything. So uh, what was cool with Super Zero was was that um, Sam gave me a chance to, uh, you gave me a chance <laughs> to actually use my narrating voice. And I always <laughs> wanted to be a voice actor. Yeah. And uh, I tend to do a lot of uh, different animated voices. And one of these days when I go to Florida, I'm going to stop there and uh, say, hey, can I put in a little resume or something <laughs> to try to do uh, a little cartoon voices or something? It's always been a dream of mine. So what was nice is that you gave me the opportunity to uh, be the narrator on this. And the first time I read the script, I, I loved it. It was <laughs> It was fascinating, and uh, it was a lot of fun, and uh, humorous, and, and exciting, and, and like, yeah, this is this is gonna be cool. So uh, that's kind of how you got me into that uh, by the fact that you were nice enough to ask the voice of the Vikings to do some narrator work. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. Sorry, sorry. Just quick, a uh, little fact about Mr. Gordon is that uh, he also runs the the news place, the news channel at the school, we're called Viking Vision, and it's. A really cool opportunity to do stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah it's, it's nine years strong now. We just had yeah. our 500th episode back in January, and uh, which Sam was on, and uh, it was quite amazing that we've done so many in, in nine years. So, oh sweet, so my senior year will be ten years. Yes, that's awesome. Look at that. He, that's he exciting. planned it out just to be like that. Perfect. Honestly. <laughs> Sorry, and that okay. your your turn. Alrighty. So honestly. I got, and so Super Zeros was my first show ever, like, where I actually gained the courage finally to, like, it's always been something I've loved to do, but I just never really got into it that much, and that's, and honestly, one of my biggest regrets is that I didn't realize, like, I loved theater so much sooner, and then I got, kind of got involved in it really late, but, like, so for my first show, like, having it be something about superheroes, especially being, you know, me being a huge superhero nerd, as you all know, um, uh, it was perfect for me to like get out, like finally jump out of my comfort zone, and like do something I'd never done before, and I had so much fun, and I couldn't be happy. I couldn't have asked for a better first show to do. So thanks. Oh, well, like you. Uh, yeah. And as her dad, it was amazing just to see her come out of her shell like right? that. Yeah. You know, which I give a lot of credit to you because like, if you hadn't created the show and written this, and and then you know had the um, just the ambition to to create something so much fun and perfect for her, but also to give someone who had really no acting experience in a sense uh, to give them a, a leading role. And, and you know, Sarah surprised me so yeah. much on there that not that she couldn't memorize lines, but that she actually was 
able to envelop the character mm -hmm. and to, to act and <laughs> in front of an audience <laughs> instead of just goofing around here at home. And, and that was that was it was refreshing. It was amazing, and, and we're very grateful. Thanks, mm -hmm. thank you. Very <laughs> grateful. Honestly, uh, that, <laughs> no, oh, sorry. Go ahead. <laughs> So honestly, too, uh, you inspired me because I'm honestly considering, <laughs> I'm honestly considering writing my own play too for next year. Ah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. I really want to, and I haven't really put that out there yet to anyone yet, except for like him and maybe it's one awesome. other. But I'm considering actually really doing that because that's something I also love writing too. That's amazing. And, yeah, he's always told me I'm a good writer, so. I'd like to write something too. So thank you for being the first one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Please keep doing that. That's amazing. Good for you. Yeah. Trailblazer you. Sam Summer. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, well, she's gonna be president of Spotlighters too. So again, you know, it's a spark that you uh, helped ignite because she <laughs> went from never acting to now this year as a junior. Um, she's president in training, and next year, if all goes well, she'll be president of Spotlighters. And like you said. Yeah. You know, she she might uh, write something and see where it goes. That's amazing. That's amazing. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, all right. Uh, let me get into the actual Super Zeros questions here. Okay. <laughs> uh, how did – this is probably really simple, but how did you two, like, get into Super Zeros? Like, how did you find out and, like, what brought you into it? Uh, I'll, I'll start. Um <laughs> Well, first, Sam, I mean, it was the summer before um, before the school year where you had uh, shared with me um, your first draft, or at least, you know, one of your first acts of the two-act show. Uh, you shared with me the um, the script, and I looked at this, and I'm like, oh my gosh, this is so funny. And I love just the different characters, and you know, I'm a big superhero nerd too, so it was fun seeing this little play off of, you know, the current superheroes there. And just you know, all the different things. You had the quick chick, you had early bird, um, key master. I mean it was it was neat these different characters and they all had their little quirks and stuff. So that was my first uh involvement with Super Zeros was you sharing that with me and saying, Hey, you know, what do you think? And and I loved it from from the get go. It was, it was awesome. Yeah, I remember because I I don't know what, how, like, why I decided, but I guess I decided it was time for me to, like, actually do a class that I had a passion for, so I ended up taking theater and acting, mm -hmm. and that's where I heard about it. Yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. Yeah, <laughs> I remember, I think, I don't know, maybe you came and talked about it a little bit, or I just heard mm -hmm. other people talk about it, and they're like, and I remember I was so nervous because I wanted to do it so badly, but I never actually auditioned for it, because I had, like, so much going on, so I was, like, freaking out, and... I was like, oh my gosh, I wanted to be in it so bad. And then I never auditioned, so I'm like, oh no, I'm not going to be in it. Uh, but then I remember you, like, put me in this, like, you entrusted me some, like, you know, trusted that I have some, even a little bit of talent. And put me in, and put me in the, like, a role, and so I'm very happy that you did that. And I remember I was like, um, I think I had, like, a Masterminds meet, and I was reading through the script, and I was there. <laughs> And I was I was sitting on the bus reading through the script, even though I should have been doing homework, but <laughs> homework, who cares? <laughs> um, so I was sitting there, and I was just laughing my head off when I was reading through it, and people on the bus were probably like, what the heck are you doing? And I'm like, hey, I'm an actor now. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, this actually kind of goes into one of my other questions, is that... You two are probably the biggest superhero fans I know. <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> and yep. my first marketing, one, one of like the main marketing techniques I had for this was like, hey, do you hate superhero films? So do I. Let's talk about this show. <laughs> oh my god. Like, did, what, was the, did you guys join in a little too, like I know you were there from the beginning, but right. were you there, Sarah, for when I started saying stuff like that? Maybe. I remember some, a little bit of it, but I might have been mm -hmm. a little bit after. Yeah. I don't know. I can't remember now. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, uh, yeah, the biggest thing was that I wanted to make fun of the genre. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah. But, but I knew I couldn't do that with without a genuine love for the, the genre. Mm -hmm. right. And 
part of that comes from getting you guys in it because <laughs> if I need like the biggest fans I could find <laughs> to make well, it like that's faithful. The beauty of it is that you know to to you, you wrote the script in a sense that you could tell that you did love it, but you don't take like your love for superheroes so seriously that you can't go and make fun of it. Exactly. Yeah. It's almost yeah. like you know, you're taking yourself, for instance. You know, you you. Some people are way too serious in what they do, and the problem with that is is that they they're always so tight. And, you know, they can never branch out and, and realize their potential because they're so serious and worried about it. Sometimes you have to be able to laugh at yourself, and that's what was great about this is that you know, in some sense, I mean, really, we're all laughing at ourselves in these in these roles because you know, so tongue in cheek and 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 everything and. As, as much as they're trying to be heroes, they're, they're kind of bumbling idiots. But that's okay, in a sense, because, I mean, they, they come together as a team, and you know, they show it works. But, but what's, like I said, what's great is that you can – it's it's okay to make fun of yourself and yeah. to be loose and you know understand your role, but at the same time be like, okay, yeah, all right, have some fun with it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, so this question's for Sarah. Uh, okay. This – you had nothing to work off of besides like other like comic book movies, but as like early bird specifically, you had nothing to work off of besides like your partner, Abby, I guess. But even then it was pretty much you creating the character. So how was that experience like for you? I mean, honestly, that was amazing. It was, it's so cool to be able to like create something from honestly nothing. Cause like, I mean, that's what you kind of did with your show in the first place. Mm-hmm. I remember, I don't know if you remember, I, uh, re- like, do you remember the 10, <laughs> the 10 page, like, biography <laughs> about my. <laughs> I, <laughs> you yeah. Know, you asked us to write, like, maybe a one page essay about the background of our character. And I come in, I show you up. You went and above me. and beyond. For I that. Really did. And I loved it so much. <laughs> I know. Thank you. I, I think so Sarah was, was trying to make the show called Early Bird. <laughs> Super Zeros because she had a whole backstory. I mean, you, were you, were pretty much, you were pretty much method acting. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much. <laughs> yeah, so... I mean, that just goes to show, like, how much passion I had. Because I remember the one day I was, like, up till midnight working on that when I, again, I should have been doing homework. homework. <laughs> but, you know, I was working on that, which was so much more fun. And it was just so cool being able to, like, totally create something from absolutely nothing. And just see where it goes, you know? Mm-hmm. You're just you're using your, like, imagination. That's one of our biggest tools that we have. So yeah. it's just so fun to do. Yeah. Yeah. And what was, what was, uh your experience like in production and as well as performing the show it was super cool i've never like i've never ever had to do anything like that before and because i've always been in the the one time i was in stage crew i know like one time in middle school and then i've been in the pit for like the last two musicals except for this year but so i've never actually had like the on stage aspect of it and it was so cool like seeing like you get, you actually get more of an appreciation too of what everyone else does because mm-hmm. you seem to see like you see what the stage crew does and all that the pit does for you as well as like what you do to the show mm-hmm. or, and what you contribute to the show, and it was just such a cool thing like see like getting all the lights and all the music involved and do, working on the fight training that was super fun <laughs> because. <laughs> There's so many times like when I'm watching like Captain America and I just wanna start <laughs> I just wanna start acting it out and doing throwing punches like he does. <laughs> so that was really cool. I remember uh you and Patrick like nonstop oh working on your fight together. <laughs> Because you're like, this part's so cool that we gotta, we gotta get it right. You gotta make it fast and clean. I know. Well, did you have to tell her too to kind of to take it easy and chill? Because I mean, I she, she almost connected a couple times, but I think she was so intense because of her uh, her Captain America training there yeah. that she's had. That I mean, she really. I, I feel like one of you guys had to say something. Like, yeah, hey, yeah, probably. You know? Probably. I don't. I, no, I can't remember exactly, but yeah. Yeah, Sounds and it was right. so funny too. It was like literally just a week ago, me and Patrick and like we were all were in there working on the like the little to- little kid shows for Tales for Tots, <laughs> and we were I don't know how we got on the subject for Super Zeros, but we were talking about it a little bit, and then me and Patrick, I was like Patrick. 
Let's see. Let's go through our fight. I wonder if we still remember it. We remembered most of it. it was wait, like, wait. Are you saying like Tales for Tots that like this year? Yeah. Oh my God! Wow. <laughs> I know. I know. It was like, ago, and we both remembered like most of the fight. Wow. So it was so Good cool. for you guys. I probably can't even remember anything <laughs> from it. I just remember your one. You were showing the one jump. I think it was Stan, like, supposed to jump. Oh, my God. His back. <laughs> and you did it perfectly, and I think it was, like, Joe and Dan tried, but they, they yeah. just, they yeah. just couldn't. Like, <laughs> but, like, the thing is, when we worked with that, we couldn't, we didn't, like, I think them not being able to do it, like, made the show even better. Like, we worked yeah. together with that. Because <laughs> it, it, like, there, it's one thing to make it, sorry, one thing, it's one thing to make it look cool, but then there's another thing to make, fit, make it fit the tone of the show. Yeah. Where it's supposed to be silly and cheesy. Right. Exactly. Where, I, where I'll try to teach them like something that I think looks really cool. And then they're like, I don't think we can do that. So we're like, okay, let's make it as silly yeah. as possible. And yeah. that, for some reason, made it work even better. Yeah, definitely. You just make one of the tales for Tots, just you and Patrick just doing the fights. <laughs> They'll take them about funny. three, four minutes, and there you go. Right. And scene. <laughs> Mr. Gordon, uh, as someone who has been in the field for quite a long time now, yeah. how what was it like doing something that was more original and that you kind of had a little bit more control with, as well as you had to kind of teach me how someone who has never done anything like that on the besides acting, he's, I've never worked in like lighting or sound. You kind of like taught me how to work certain subjects and certain like tools. But, well, yeah. it was neat seeing the creative process happen because mm -hmm. um, first thing you always have to have the script. And mm -hmm. what was great is you had a great script and you, you're a strong force there. So you didn't have the fear of basically telling everyone how things needed to be done. So it, it helped that you were a strong director because that's where everything starts is with the script and with the direction. So it was really easy for me to explain what we had to do, to, you know, on the technical side, because you already had the actors set on what they needed to do. Mm -hmm. So it, it was really an easy process. And, you know, for the most part, the, the light cues, you know, we were just able to sit down and, you know, the, the biggest thing is just that we had the time to do that. Yeah. Um, you, you were able to, um, after the musical was over, you really hunkered down on, working on super zero so that gave us about a month and a half to really sit down but what was great is you had a vision of what you want each scene to look like um and the sound obviously we wanted to have everyone mic'd that we could mm -hmm. um and it was just a matter of you know making sure we had every piece in place um that everyone understood how to put on mics if they had never been on there before me. Um, yeah, like Sarah. Um, but also, too, this is the sound effects and the timing. Because, you know, the show is a lot of comedy in there. So if you don't have the timing down of when we're going to hit the sound effects, it's, the, the, the trick's not going to work. It's, it's almost like a, a magician trying to get some, something timed out, his or her uh, trick mm -hmm. to work right. If it's not timed right. So what was great, again, is we, we worked off the script and obviously one of my funny favorite moments is in one of the rehearsals when we just kept doing the the horse winning sound effect every time someone said horse oh man God. and i know eventually you backed off from doing that yeah. so we have key master but I, I i think i was in tears because every time we someone would say his name hilarious. which is a lot of times in the script you're like horse man, <laughs> horse man. <laughs> i think uh i remember that rehearsal was like since it was an original show we were able to uh pretty much do whatever we wanted with it yeah so i remember there was one rehearsal <laughs> where i i just like had the idea just like what if we just kept playing the horse winning for every time we did because it was in the script for just like the one time when he said his name yes but we were like what if it was just every time he said his name and we didn't tell the cast that we just kind of went with it and see what happened <laughs> and the best I, I remember the best reaction was lennon <laughs> 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 Because he, like, obviously no one's expecting it, but him, he would always, like, try to redo his line. <laughs> but he never, like, got in his head that, like, 
when you say horseman, that's when the sound effect will go on. Oh so he'll start his line over, and then the the sound effect will go again, and then he'll just freak out and try saying it again and again. <laughs> but yeah, and then well, it got to the point. The too of having the original material is that there weren't necessarily any rules to follow in the sense that okay, this is a script, a copyrighted script that had already been done, that you got to stick to every line and everything. You were flexible enough to say, okay, hey, I see something that you're doing up there. Let's have you ad-lib that into there. Mm -hmm. So, for instance, when you said Lennon, who was the absolute perfect key master. You know, when he's up there uh, singing his little song right before... Oh, the my God. <laughs> you know, you probably didn't have that in the script right away, but he ad-libbed it, but you gave him the, the sense, of, oh, I love that. Yeah, that, that was... was the fun part of a, a creative yeah. uh, experience there... with this. There's one line that he ad that actually made it into the film filmed version, was that uh, because <laughs> in in the in the show, if, if for some reason you're watching this video and and you haven't seen the production, which I don't know why you're watching this, <laughs> but there's a moment where he's working on his invention and he starts singing, uh, "If I were you, I'd want to be me too," but in the recording he ad libs like in the show he ad libs saying. <laughs> You know, you should be privileged to be here. If I was you, I'd want to be me too. Oh, wink, wink. <laughs> Don't oh, wink, wink. Wink, yeah. oh, wink. wink. <laughs> We're bursting out laughing. Yes. Oh, there is yeah. so many great so moments many. like that. Where... Yeah. There's also many moments in the recording, recording, like recorded version where you can hear you laughing and filming. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's it's it, no like it's it's totally fine because you were enjoying it and then yeah. how can oh, I critique you for having fun and watching it? Oh, yeah. oh it was it, it was, was a blast. So <laughs> I remember like the one time Dan when he when he was doing one of his fight scenes, um, his mic fell out and he just <laughs> it comes swinging out and he's like, oh look a mic. And I'm like, I'm trying to keep my composure because I'm supposed to, it was the part where I'm supposed to be like. Like refereeing their fight, yeah, and I just yeah. tried to stop, like not start laughing, but I just couldn't. <laughs> it was so funny because it worked perfectly, yeah, especially with his character. Uh, going to the, your character, uh, who is Early Bird to you? Basically myself. <laughs> <laughs> and for being real here, she's so like she's such a feisty side to her, and um. As to, I definitely can have my I have my moments too. I have, can definitely be very feisty <laughs> sometimes, and she's just like, she definitely wants to be in charge and be on top. And I also can relate because I'm very competitive at like pretty much everything. So I could definitely relate to her in that way. And she just she just meant so much to me because it was I was like, I was playing myself, but in like kind of. But in a like superhero, which is pretty much I wish I could be. So it's like your dream, I guess. <laughs> exactly, it was basically my dream. Because you got to live out being a superhero for a night. For a couple exactly. Nights. Yeah, that's definitely. So that was amazing. So that was yeah. basic, basically a dream come true, like you said. <laughs> and it was fun seeing her play the role because you could tell how much she enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. um, because. Oh, yeah. You had to tell her you can't be smiling up there. Early Bird's kind of grumpy <laughs> right. at times. You know, she really is. She's she's frustrated with how everything's going. She wants perfection. She wants yeah. this. She wants to be able to fly her reel. I yeah. mean, but she was enjoying it so much that sometimes she just a smile on her face. Yeah, I, I felt bad. Like sometimes I would be I like, stop fun, having you know? so much fun. Yeah. <laughs> telling me to stop smiling so much a couple times I'm like sorry <laughs> I can't help it <laughs> but yeah i'm, and I'm very glad the interpretations too because a couple of the roles are double casted yeah mm -hmm. so there was stan was double casted mm -hmm. early bird was double casted mm -hmm. and uh, uh let's see um, the uh, mom Girl. mom was yep and, yeah. and uh pedestrian yeah yeah so it was neat seeing the different interpretations Mm -hmm. of it too yeah. now, now i think the finished version is sarah's, sarah's cast yeah yeah but it was it was neat to see how each person you know interpreted the character differently yeah all uh, very good yeah uh, if you're wondering why didn't the the other cast get representation they did it's in the poster the the, the sarah's cast got the film recording 
and the other cast got them like put into a poster. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I think it was equal enough, I guess. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Yeah. Definitely. Uh, uh, just a couple finishing questions. Uh, what was like your two favorite parts? One that you did and one that other people have done. And that, that goes for you too, Mr. Gordon. Like, um, okay, definitely one of the best parts, the Joe v. Joe. The Joe versus Joe, the one you punched in the face. Oh, and they caught it on camera. Oh, are you talking about when we... I, I meant in the show, like, not like an accident. Oh, my, oh, my bad. Sorry, context. We had... Uh, <laughs> look, now I gotta explain to the camera. <laughs> This uh, would be a party at the cut. <laughs> no, uh, when we were filming for when AM Buffalo came to interview us, we were we they wanted to see some of the fight scenes, and <laughs> and the one time that we ac had an accident where an actor punched another act like actually hit another actor was the time where AM Buffalo was filming. <laughs> the one time. The one time. That was but, yeah. funny. All right, you, you can go first because I need time to think. Oh no, I need time to think. You, oh. um, take your take time. There, take your time. There's so many. There's so many yeah, favorite just... parts. Um, all right, here you you think about some. I'll try to okay to come up with a couple here. There's so many. Um, I have to say, Lennon was was. I mean, you could tell that most of the parts when you hear me laughing behind the camera is when Lennon's doing his stuff. He was the absolute perfect key master. Um, the and the per perfect villain, yes. I remember you warning shorts. me about his attire. <laughs> and the first time it came out, I was like, oh my goodness. I actually... I'm never going to be able to unsee that. It's <laughs> uh... <laughs> so true. But he was just so good in that role. And even, you know, silly parts, like during like the big battle scenes, when he would just be like, bam! Or, oh no, yeah, when he kicks in the door, every time he comes... Door. He'd say his own sound effects. Bam! He'd do his own sound effects. <laughs> Wait! Wait! Uh, but just, you know, Lennon being Lennon was, that yeah. was one of my favorite parts, was just seeing that. Mm -hmm. um, and then, I mean, on a, a personal level, just seeing Sarah on stage and, mm -hmm. and getting out of her, um, her comfort zone and doing everything, she really did impress me because she um, got through all the lines and stuff, and she was actually... I know just from stories that she would tell me, she was helping some of the other actors who have done this a couple of times. Not necessarily getting through lines, but just other stuff behind the scenes that you never saw in the videos. Um, just being able to help them because they would forget a prop or a mask or this and that. <laughs> so, true. yeah. So, I mean, it was it was cool to see her take such a leadership role, uh, not only on stage, but behind scenes, too, to, to uh, make the production as, as great as it was. Mm -hmm. And... To add a, maybe a third one, it, w it was great to see the uh, publicity that you were able to get, um, Sam, by the fact that it is Grand Island's first ever student written and produced and performed uh, and directed show um, in Grand Island history. So, I mean, that was neat to see you know, all the publicity that you're able to get for it, because uh, you certainly deserved it. And... Um, it was nice on the on the last night, you know, when Mrs. Kennedy is giving out all the awards and stuff like that. But just to see the appreciation that everybody had for, you know, what was a historical yeah. uh, performance and and a, uh, what's the word I'm trying to say, a culmination yeah. of everything that you worked together and and the crew and the cast and everything. Yeah, uh, I actually like I I just had my interview with Lennon, uh, and we were talking about like now we 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 we've had time to grow and we look back on the script and there are a lot of mistakes that we make. <laughs> it's not, I, I'm sorry to burst your bubble, but it's not the best script ever made. <laughs> but, uh, we, and we, and we, and every now and then we do make fun of it. Yeah. yeah. But we were both like agreeing that like, it was a great starting point and we are very lucky and very honored that we were able to pull that off and get the public, the, people liked it and that that we got recognition and that mm -hmm. it was like a, a really good starting point and kind of helped push us to do more greater things yeah definitely 
Okay, so I have a co I have a couple. So I remember the one part it was probably one of the funniest when I have to do where I'm trying to prove to them I can actually fly, and we decided to add the bird saw in there, like the the caca. Oh yeah, <laughs> you added that. <laughs> I know. And I added that in there. <laughs> What was that? And I remember the first time I like screamed at the top of my lungs, so I'm like, I might as well just go for it. And everyone just started laughing. And that was and that was so good. And that was so amazing. <laughs> Thank you. You took you made a choice. And that was like some of the best parts of the show were when the actors made their like made choices and tried something new and mm -hmm. like taking the script and try to elevate it even more. And that's what <laughs> yeah. you did and and it made it even better than it already was. Oh, thank you. <laughs> so, I like that part. Definitely the fight scenes are awesome, because mm -hmm. who doesn't love a good fight scene? <laughs> <laughs> um, and then I remember, like, the one part when we were invading uh, Keymaster Lennon's lair, but I kept, like, I kept getting hit with the door. That was fun. <laughs> that was funny. Um, and then I probably, <laughs> like, for other people's parts, I like, Stan, whenever he broke the fourth wall, and he was like out in the audience. That was just hilarious. <laughs> Honestly, it was so funny. And of course, Horseman, just being Horseman. <laughs> oh, with the head when they opened. Oh the yes. yes. The beginning, the beginning of that too. too. When I die. Oh <laughs> my god, alert. that was classic. <laughs> oh my god. Uh, yeah. Back to like what Lennon said. We said that like if we had to show anyone a clip of Super Zeros to tell them what's about, that's probably the scene we'd show them. <laughs> Yes. That was that that's so that like is better than any uh, Batman origin story because Batman origin story does not have a horseman head sitting in a perfectly <laughs> just perfectly light, placed spotlight. Yeah, uh, right we there. we actually had to you and I had to actually had to like manually put that together just to get that right spot. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, we did. We had to move the light, but when it the first time in a rehearsal. When we got that to go, we were like, "This is the coolest thing ever!" You know, it was. And really... I was, I was very happy, and I'm sure you guys were happy too that the audience thought that was the probably one of the best parts of the show. <laughs> that was definitely yeah, best. that there was just there was just an, a roar of laughter when the curtains opened, yeah. and there was just that chorus just. So, yeah, it was so hard for me to not start <laughs> laughing because I'm supposed to be dead, and I can't, but I'm sitting there on the ground like shaking. And I'm like, Music mm. choices too. Oh yeah. You know, I'm just Patrick just sitting on his knees pretending to be a kid. You know, walking on his knees. You know what I mean? Right. And he's like, oh, hey, Dad. You know. Uh -huh. I mean, it's yeah. just, but then you had the music choices you had because as soon as he turns around, you can see that thing, and I mean, mm -hmm. the audience is just rolling. We're rolling yeah. in the back there, you know, watching and and yeah. recording, and you know, that was that absolutely is one of the best yeah. best uh -huh. scenes best parts of the show yeah, yeah uh, uh just the last question i'll have for you guys and then okay i'll let you guys go and live your um. lives uh <laughs> if you if you had to take something from doing that show and like in and put bring it back if you learned something from the show like what would that be if you if you could take something from that that experience that you had huh. and that goes for both of you yeah so I guess just maybe like, um, definitely like the passion I definitely had for it since it, you know, being a superhero show and just like, you know, always like keeping that passion for like acting and all that, um, that I have and like definitely applying that to future shows, which I, I basically do that in real life if we're being honest, but you know, always just like keeping that passion and that's like the love and that's what makes a performance good is that you're like really into it and dedicated to making it the best it possibly can, but also having a lot of fun with it, like not being too serious, like you said. Mm -hmm. It's like that's what allows you to grow. And to, to go and to kind of piggyback off of what she's saying, just for Sarah in general, having done this show has just opened her up to a whole new world of what she is passionate about. 
uh, which is theater and acting and music and and really just I mean you know she's looking at colleges now that has that in mind you know has theater and and, and acting and music in mind um, so that sparked from doing Super Zeros and from Jimmy doing your show. Mm-hmm. I mean, she listens to musicals <laughs> all the time now. I mean, it's everything on her playlist. You know, we got the Apple but Music and <laughs> pretty much everything on her playlist is a musical <laughs> or a play or something that she's yeah. learning. And, and um, you know, she's just been involved now in all the theater classes and public speaking and Everything concert that she's choir. doing in concert choir, right? She started to sing this year, in her Again. junior year, the first time since eighth grade. And she made it a point to get in her schedule because she has that passion to perform now. And uh, Super Zeros was the the uh, push that she needed, and it was a great opportunity to get her started. And what a great start it was. Um, as far as what I took from it, it was just the originality. Um, again, being able to see a student created show that was able to get on there and it was a great quality performance and, and everything was, was well produced, um, and directed by you. It was quite amazing to, to see, and there's not a, enough original sh- things out there, uh, in movies and stuff. A lot, a lot of stuff is just retreads now of shows when I grew up. <laughs> yeah. You know, you look at TV and movies, and most of those retreads are pretty bad. Oh, yeah. They're they're not as good as the original. So what's nice is that this was an original show. And uh, I I know, and I can probably speak for Sarah, too, we we had a blast, and it was an Mm -hmm. absolute pleasure to do this show. And it's it's awesome. I can't believe it's already been a year. I know, right? I was so surprised. (laughs) Right. It's gone by, but I, I hope it's something that we can, you know, talk about you know, 10 years from now, 20 years from now, and uh, just always look back fondly at, at all the memories and the moments and just the whole creative process. Yeah. I just want to thank you guys so much. Like, I know you're, you're saying, like, you're, you just keep thanking me, but, like, I, it, it would have been nothing without everyone, including you guys. Like, you, like, I know technically you did it because of job and also just the opportunity. <laughs> but, just the fact that you were willing to take a chance with me, like, based, this was, like, technically this was my first directing job, I guess. This is the first thing I ever directed. This was the first thing I wrote for a stage, like, to put on. Uh-huh. And you mm-hmm. took a chance, and you guys worked with it, and you helped so much, and you were, both of you were so passionate, and I just want to thank you guys so much. You're oh, welcome. You're welcome, yeah. and, and thank, thank you. you. It, it's... <laughs> It was neat to see, you know, a student be able to take that leap into something that, you know, they really had a passion for, which is what you have a passion for. And, you know, I've always said to, to you that I felt like you were already a pro at what you do. You know, <laughs> I felt that way even as a junior. I'm like, wow, this, this kid's amazing. And um, obviously now, you know, as a freshman in college, you're, uh, you're doing great things and you have from the beginning of the school year, just knowing the productions that you work so it's just it's an honor to to know you and to work with you and it, it was really it was quite amazing to see everything come together uh with the show and and it was it was an honor it's definitely the other part of it too was it's memorable you know we still have all, so many fond memories of it yeah. whereas it was just another show that we had uh worked on that was one that's been done three or four times i don't think it would stick in our mind yeah. uh same way that this has so it's been awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, second- oh, sorry. You were saying something? No, oh, I just said I second that. Yeah, all right. <laughs> uh, well, once again, thank you guys so much for taking the time out of your day to talk to me and hang out for a bit. Of course. Uh, you guys have a special place in my heart. I love you guys so much. Cool. Thank you so much. Of Feelings course. mutual, we love Sam. You too. It was great seeing you. Great seeing yeah. you, too. And, uh, but I can't wait until uh, to see the finished product of all these interviews oh yeah <laughs> uh this this will be this will be great it's it's fun doing kind of reunion shows yeah, yeah. the talk back and like i said uh, you just had your 500, 500. Yeah. Yeah. and that was a, i mean, it was two and a half hours long i don't know yeah. if you realized that but when we put it together i couldn't believe it there's just so many 
great memories, exactly. and that was from nine years. And so you you were only a year into this mm-hmm. uh, the show, but I could tell just from all the people you're talking to, you're going to have some great yeah. great memories that you could uh, speak about. And then you're like, oh yeah, I remember. You know, maybe even some little small thing yeah. that that you forgot. Yeah. Um, all of a sudden, someone will remind you. So hey, thanks for including us. Yes. Thank you guys so much. The fight choreography was done by my good friend Drew Harvey. He taught me what to do. And then I filmed the two of us doing each of the fight scenes, so I had it on my phone. Using that, I would teach the cast members how to do it. The unsung heroes, the stage crew, or as I call them, the real heroes. I knew from the beginning that I wanted to, like, incorporate the stage crew into the show instead of them just hiding behind a curtain. So I had them dress up with masks and capes, and they all went all out and they had a blast, and I, I feel like everyone had fun with that. For this last interview, we have Keymaster himself, co-writer of the show, Lennon Harper. Hello. I'm here with Lennon Harper. I guess you can just introduce yourself and what you did. And so, this uh, is- I'm Lennon Harper, uh, former Keymaster, currently uh, uh, Epic Vidya Gamer. That's about it. All right. Well, uh, not much else. <laughs> All right, uh, a little backstory. Uh, Lennon, like, as he said, he played Keymaster in the show. He also helped write the show with me, and he's been a longtime friend and a good time partner. Oh, yeah. just saying that. So let's ask you a bunch of questions about the show and some stuff. All right, go right on ahead. All right, uh, what got you into theater? Uh, it happened... I remember this pretty distinctly. Uh, it was gym gym class where when we, when we were doing our uh, like pool swimming unit, and I think I'm pretty sure it was you who was like, "Hey, Lennon, you should you should join this the musical." But like at that year, I I just didn't because I was like really busy, like in middle school or something. I don't know, but um. Like, the next year that it was available, I was like, oh, man, that actually sounds pretty cool. Maybe I'll give that a go. So, uh, like, the first musical that we did, ever since then, I've been pretty pretty all about that crowd. I thought it was uh, an interesting time. I liked performing. I liked uh, was putting that? on a good show. I liked the applause, the applause, <laughs> that sort of thing. What was the first show you did? Pirates of Penzance. Ah, okay. Mm-hmm. All right. Uh, I might have told me to do like the the play that they were putting on that year, but I wasn't sure what it was. Mm-hmm. But either way, that was the first show that I did. Yeah. Fun fact about Lennon: he was also in William Shakespeare's A Midsummer Night's Dream. <laughs> Can you tell us a little bit. I like. I guess it's a little off topic, but you want to talk about that? Yeah. No, that that's fine. I mean, I I liked that show, but I feel like there were just a lot of flops in it. But. <laughs> I mean, like, I had fun, obviously. I wouldn't have done it if I didn't enjoy it. It's just, it was a very, like, weird production of it because we weren't doing, like, like a Shakespeare, like, in the Shakespeare time for, like, the uh, the setting of it. We were all just sort of, like, dressed in polos and dresses. <laughs> <laughs> Which is fine, whatever. I mean... Different it's interpretations. Just kind of jarring to me, at least. Yeah, all right. All right, let's actually get into, like, the Super Zero stuff, the, the important questions. Right. Oh, yes, of course. All right, uh, how did you get into Super Zeros? Sam. <laughs> well, Sam. like, do you know, like, what I did or something? Yeah, I know, yeah, like, yeah, obviously of course. I told you. But, um, uh, uh, I'm not sure if it was, like, what I think, if I'm recalling this correctly, you just told me, like, I don't know. How how long has it been at this point in time? Uh the like like since when? Like since it opened? Uh like since we started writing it. We started writing it in the summer before our senior oh. year in high school. We started this working on it. And summer. <laughs> but anyway, yeah, like back then you just sort of told me like, "Hey, I got this I got this show. It's like about superheroes and stuff." And I was like, "Oh, that sounds pretty interesting. I'll I'll I, I'd be all about that. So one of the times you just like brought me up and you sat me down and we were like clip clapping, tip tapping away on the keyboard, like writing down 
like the story and what sounded funny to us and it just sort of arose from there and it sort of turned into that whole big thing yeah yeah uh what did you add to the script because like i like i could explain but i think you would know more because you actually talked about it it was it's yeah. your writing mm-hmm. well it's um it's, it's like I don't know how to put it into words. It's like um the good parts. The good parts, of course. All the good parts came from me, because a lot of that was just sort of like writing it in the moment and like at the time you you sort of had like a general gist of what you wanted like I don't know the the dialogue and the story to be, mm-hmm. but like it was very like sort of loose and up in the air as to like what the the finer details were. So. It was it was like an interesting process just because we got to do pretty much whatever we wanted with um yeah. like all the like the the little jokes that people would go, "Eh, that's funny. He said joke. That's funny. I like that." <laughs> uh this is a little this isn't one of my questions, but like uh there was a moment like uh, there was like a time like since we've done that show, there's many times where we kind of make fun of it. Yeah. Because it wasn't like it wasn't really meant to be anything overly serious. Obviously, yeah, you yeah. had like a guy wearing a horse mask for the <laughs> entire show. But I, I I could say for myself that as much as I make fun of it, I am very happy that that was able to like launch what I'm doing yeah. now. And of course, I mean it became like an actual show that like the school put on, and they like did a news like a bit on it. So yeah. obviously, it must have been something. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, uh, you like I'm just saying that you helped do that too, and that's and I I appreciate that a lot. And I'm oh no problem. It's I, like it was you're just taking some stuff out of this. Was for you, I would say. Like I got to be part of something that big, and that was that's really cool. Yeah. All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, so like the first thing I told to you about this show was that I made this character named Keymaster. And mm-hmm. I want you to play him. And you didn't I, know you didn't know who he was because you hadn't read the script yet. Yeah. And then when you did, yeah, it it just it just clicked like that. It was like, <laughs> uh, uh. but like, what was I guess like? I'll, I'll go more into detail, but like first is like, what was your like reaction once you realized who Keymaster was? I I I liked the character from because. The, you told me that you wanted me to play him, but you still had me, like, go and, like, try out all the other characters, which was, like, that makes sense. But, um, I think that was, like, that role just sort of clicked for me. Like, all the lines and, like, the body acting, I guess you could say, was, like, something I was really, I was really all about that. Yeah. <laughs> There's a moment in the Act 1 finale where you use just your physicality. And every time I watch it, I'm just, like, in tears laughing. <laughs> just how, like, flexible you are, and you're just like, what a... Yeah. And it's supposed to be this intimidating villain, but you're just so... It's just so fun to watch, and you do such a great mm-hmm. job with it. Thanks. Uh, like, yes, obviously, like... I guess I would say mainly I wrote that part, but mm-hmm. you as the actor, not not just you as the writer, but you as an actor, you kind of brought this new life to the character that I couldn't oh, have. Yeah. yeah. And what did what did you add to him? Oh, um I'd say if anything, I tried to like bring the character like a step above like what the writing was because like if you're just reading it as like I don't know, if you did like a, a storybook version of uh, Super Zeros, you, you'd like you'd get the gist of like what Keymaster was. Mm-hmm. But like when you're acting, you sort of want to bring that just higher than you could, like just in your brain. Yeah. If that makes any sense. No. Yeah. 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 All right. Uh, what was your experience while like in production for the show, and as well as performing it? In production, I would say like. It was it was certainly easier uh, once we got like the script down because the biggest the biggest part of the show I think was uh, the choreography mm-hmm. and like bringing bringing the characters mm-hmm. out and because it's like all the characters in that show are very animated they have a lot of they have a lot of life got a lot of uh, a lot of sizzle mm-hmm. a lot of pizzazz to them 
Yeah. And it it it's easier once you're seeing the characters like as characters and like up and moving around and not like just actors trying to be the characters. Yeah, just actors trying to do that, huh? Yeah. And I guess what was your experience when like actually performing the show for an audience? Actually performing the show, uh I didn't really know what to think of it because Obviously, like, everyone on the cast had a good time doing it, but, like, actually putting it on as a show, I wasn't even sure what was going to happen. Like, <laughs> and I was... it's been a mess, but it actually, I think it went over pretty well. Yeah, I I know, like, for myself, and I can say for you two, as, as writers, we were very scared <laughs> to see yeah. what people thought of what we made, mm-hmm. because we didn't have the luxury of this already being an existing like, oh yeah yeah definitely. well-respected production this mm-hmm. was us creating something out of nothing and yeah, just the shakespeare you you can sort of get into it because you sort of know what's what's mm-hmm. what to expect but with something that's completely original like from from two students who go to the school it's like oh geez i don't know what that's gonna be <laughs> but yeah i am i'm very happy we got the reception that we did and that people were very open and they did enjoy it. Yeah. And like, this is kind of off topic, but like, I'll always remember the, the one, the one scene where, um, of course, uh, spoilers for, if you haven't seen <laughs> super zeros, I don't know why you'd be watching this before you watched the show. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> but, um, when the horse friend's parents die and then like, <laughs> He goes, like, upstage a little bit to, like, pick up the horse mask and, like, don it. I remember, like, every night that we put that on, that was, like, everyone's favorite bit. And I just, I love that. I think it's such, like, a hilarious moment. Did I ever tell you that I actually had to, uh, like, I had to manually, like, move a light just to get that perfect oh, moment? Really? Yeah, like, Mr. Gordon and I, we worked together just to get, uh, like, the awesome. middle light to go on that, that horse mask on that moment. Yeah, cause that, that's, like... That was pretty much as good as that scene could be, and that, as good as that could be, is pretty great. Yeah. Mm. And obviously, like, this was our first show, so we did make a lot of mistakes. Oh, yeah. That's like, true. But if it wasn't for us doing this, and we wouldn't have had that starting, like, leap mm-hmm. into doing yep. more stuff. Not to mention, I think that you and I kind of bonded a lot more. Like, we were already oh. good friends before, but now we kind yeah. of do everything together now. Yeah. That's definitely true. Like you, you're cool. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, so after Super Zeros, what has what have you been doing since? Like, what is, uh, where has your life taken you? Just like, where are they now? Kind of section. Well, uh, I don't know. I mean, like to to put it bluntly, I haven't really been doing a whole lot since mm-hmm. then. But that's, like, not to say that I've just been sitting on my hands doing nothing. I mean, I'm learning to drive. I'm working a lot. I'm, I'm really just, like, working so I can, like, go to college and, like, sort of send my right send my life on the right path. But as for, like, theater stuff, I'd, I'd, I'd really want to continue because there's n- there really isn't anything that, like, that ever stopped me from doing theater. Mm-hmm. It's not... It's not like I had one traumatic memory where it's like, oh, no, I can't do that anymore. But um, I've just been, like, I've been really happy in my, like, day-to-day life, mm-hmm. I would say, which is a, a good thing for me, as I can tell. That's good. Uh, a lot of you probably don't know this, but Lennon, as as funny and charismatic and, and quirky you may think he is, he's probably one of the most smartest people I've ever met. Mm. Uh you're go. You're planning to go to college for what again? Medicine, anesthesiology, to be particular. <laughs> like you're. You can add that that is in post. <laughs> it's you're you're just there's just this other side to you that I don't even think I know fully because yeah. you're, you're so much smarter than like some people might think that you are. Because I don't know, it's just my personality, I Exactly, guess. and I guess that is, like, a kind of fun lesson to say, like, you may be this, like, weird acting guy, but you're yeah. also such an intelligent person. Yeah, I mean, this is, like, kind of unrelated, but I feel like, um, 
the, the way that we look at a lot of like smart people, like uh, smart fellas be like math. Dumb fellas be like not math. That was yeah. probably the dumbest thing I've ever said, but <laughs> what I'm to say is that like, I swear he's smart. I swear. I feel like we look at intelligence in like a really kind of narrow minded way generally, mm -hmm. because there's a lot of ways that you can be smart in life. Mm -hmm. And just like playing it by the books is kind of misleading, yeah. I feel like. Yeah. Because you can have like you can have like a zillion different skills and you don't have to be good at just like knowing math or science. You can be smart with uh, like a car. Yeah. Or making a making a pie, uh, doing some stunts. That's all smart. <laughs> um, I hope people actually understand what I'm trying no, to say. No, yeah, I, I get you. Um, I get you. And I hope you get uh, it, too. It's going to sound like I'm talking about cars pie. and pies. <laughs> no, I get you. Um, but anyway, next question. <laughs> uh, just a couple last things. Uh, one, what's your favorite moment? Uh, there's two, like, moments. What's your favorite moment that you did, and what's your favorite moment that other people have done? I think you already said that one, but... Yeah, yeah, know. like, uh, favorite moment, yeah, it was definitely the Horseman's origin story, because, uh, I feel like if I was gonna show anyone just one scene from Super Zeros, it might be that one, because obviously it's like a parody of Batman's story, but <laughs> the, like... Just like the random burglar, like coming up and stabbing Horseman's parents, and then, <laughs> then him donning the horse mask that's just inexplicably like there on the street for no reason is like that's that's probably as super zeros as super zeros. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, and, I oh sorry, I'll let you finish. Uh, my like my personal favorite moment that I did myself. Um, Oh god, I don't know. Uh, maybe the it was either like the introduction or like the like the redone fight of like all the zeros versus Keymaster. Mm -hmm. I would think. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I I was like, I could always tell that you were having a lot of fun doing that stuff. The fight scenes, yes, yeah. mm -hmm. especially uh, like the faces you made. <laughs> it's so fun to watch. Uh, yeah, going back to the Horseman's origin. Uh. The, I, I I see a lot a lot of like parodies of the Batman's origin uh -huh. story, and a lot of them try to go above and beyond by making fun of it, where it's like the parent parents like keep getting hurt and keep like dying even faster. <laughs> and I've I've always been looking at that, and I feel like it's not it doesn't even have to be that much. Yeah, it, I, I I don't think like that was that like point is what you really need to focus on to make it funny. I, like, just the situation itself can be looked at very humorously, in a way. Yeah, yeah. And I feel like that's what we try to do. Yeah, I feel like just the idea of a, a, par a person, like, having his parents killed right in front of him, and that's going to give him the inspiration to become a superhero and dress up like a horse or a bat his, or whatever. His dad telling him that he needs to be, <laughs> he needs to dress up like a horse and fight crime. <laughs> Like, what type of mindset did Batman have to have to do that? I, th I Like, honestly, I think it was because he himself is afraid of bats and he's, like, projecting his own fear onto mm -hmm. the criminals. I mean, even still, it's kind of weird. Yeah. I mean, I'm afraid of horses. <laughs> that, that, so that makes sense to me. Yeah. All right. Uh, couple, sorry, finishing up. Uh, yeah. I, I, had, I had to ask. Uh, the the booty shorts. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I think you do know what I'm talking about. I I, I know. <laughs> um, from my standpoint, like when I when I was like uh, like making sort of making what I could do with the keymaster character, like in my head, I kind of imagined like what he was gonna look like, and I was like, I think. I think I know. I think that's about right. And then we got the costume, and I was like, "This is not <laughs> what I thought it was gonna be." Uh, but 
you you used that to your advantage. I don't know yeah. if you did it subconsciously or you you did it intentionally, but the booty shorts were just supposed to be by themselves, but you used it as a prop, which was mm-hmm. which I thought was hilarious. Like you kept your phone in there, you kept the pen in there. <laughs> like I never would have thought of that, but you did it, and it made it even yeah. more funny. Because it's obviously like no no sane person would have worn that. And like when when I first reveal it, and then Horseman's like, "Oh God, no!" Like is that's that's about how that's about how most people would react. So. You know, you might as well just go the extra mile if you're gonna wear something like that. You also, uh, uh, you also got a a pretty dang cool cape to go. With yeah, it. that's it's pretty dang cool. <laughs> dang cool. Yeah. Uh, last question. Uh, if you could take anything that you got from Super Zeros and and keep it in your life, not like physical or just mentally, like what okay. would that be? Uh, if I could keep anything, um, I feel, okay, here's, here's what it'd be. Uh, if I could take anything, it would be, it was like, one of, one of the most, one of the things that sticks out the most to me was like, it was on, uh, the closing night where we were all just on the stage, like after the show was over and I just like looked over and I saw like everyone together and I thought that. That was that was kind of inspiring, actually, to know that like you and I had written that, and they were all like finally together, and it was it was over, but it was like it was. I think it had a good run, and I was I was pretty satisfied with the way that everything turned out, and I was glad that everyone was the like together, and they could they could I think that they could feel it too. Mm-hmm. But what but what would like what do you take from that now that like like what have you learned from that yeah you. Interpret, oh, it's in, it, like in uh, I think it, it it sort of inspires me to know that I can like make something mm-hmm. that that makes an impact on other people. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's cool. Mm. Well, thank you so much. Oh no, You're it was great. my pleasure. You're awesome. Uh, Everyone know his name because he's cool and stuff. Lennon Harper. Len P. Harper, yes. Yes. <laughs> Thanks a lot, man. Oh, uh, no. Best. Call me any time. No. And I'll see you this summer. <laughs> see you this Sam summer. Okay, bye. Okay, bye. <laughs> see you, man. Bye. I would like to thank you for watching this, along with everyone who helped out in the production and who was in the show and who crewed the show, just everyone in general. To be honest, this show came at like a low point in my life, so it really helped me regain that confidence. If I could learn anything from the show, it's that no matter what happens, keep working at your art, keep building your passion, stay passionate, be creative, love yourself, love others, and also try to challenge yourself every now and then. I really wish I could have talked to everyone who helped out with Super Zeros, but if I did this video would have been like 24 hours or whatever it would have been a lot but i do want to give everyone credit so everyone that has helped out with the production their name is right in the description thanks for watching again i hope this brought you joy or anything or something something nice and pleasant okay bye